without a doubt, we live in difficult times. And it's in times like this that we need inspiration. We need God to speak to us and reaffirm the purpose of life, humanity, the purpose of our very life. Why are we alive now and why should we get out of bed today? In the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, written by King Solomon, the preacher, the son of David, gives us the meaning of life. Let's delve into it together. One video, one chapter. We're going to do Ecclesiastes chapter 8 in one video. So let me read Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses 1 through 17. This is what the New American Standard Bible says. Who is like the wise man and who knows the interpretation of a matter? A man's wisdom illumines him and causes his stern face to beam. I say, keep the command of the king because of the oath before God. Do not be in a hurry to leave him. Do not join in an evil matter, for he will do whatever he pleases. Since the word of the king is authoritative, who will say to him, what are you doing? He who keeps a royal command experiences no trouble, for a wise heart knows the proper time and procedure. For there is a proper time and procedure for every delight, though a man's trouble is heavy upon him. If no one knows what will happen, who can tell him when it will happen? No man has authority to restrain the wind with the wind or authority over the day of death. And there is no discharge in the time of war and evil will not deliver those who practice it. All this I have seen and applied my mind to every deed that has been done under the sun, wherein a man has exercised authority over another man to his hurt. Verse 10. So then I have seen the wicked buried, those who used to go in and out from the holy place, and they are soon forgotten in the city where they did thus. This too is futility, because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed quickly. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men among them are given fully to do evil. Although a sinner does evil a hundred times and may lengthen his life, Still, I know that it will be well for those who fear God, who fear him openly. But it will not be well for the evil man, and he will not lengthen his days like a shadow, because he does not fear God. Verse 14. There is futility which is done on the earth. That is, there are righteous men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked. On the other hand, there are evil men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I say that this too is futility. So I commend pleasure, for there is nothing good for man under the sun except to eat and to drink and to be merry. And this will stand by him in his toils throughout the days of his life, which God has given him under the sun. Verse 18. When I gave my heart to know wisdom and to seek the task which has been done on the earth, even though one should never sleep day or night, and I saw every work of God, I concluded that man cannot discover the work which has been done under the sun. Even though man should seek laboriously, he will not discover. And though the wise man should say, I know, he cannot discover. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 1 through 17. Chapter 7 and 8 explore the limitations and effectiveness of wisdom in the messiness of mortal life. Chapter 7 alludes to humanity bending what God made straight, perverting what God made good, and ignoring God's wisdom by chasing every distraction and idol. Here in chapter 8, well chapter 8 opens with a question that serves as the topic issue for the whole passage, the topic sentence. 
Who is like the wise man and who knows the interpretation of a matter? That question is the topic sentence for the entire chapter. Paragraph, chapter eight, verses one through nine, warns the leader and the follower. The dangers of submitting to authority is exercising power over another to their destruction. People need to obey the civil authority because it is pleasing to God, verse two, but stay present and join carefully with discernment, verse three, because the king is above correction, verse four. And yet obedience brings no trouble if the timing and procedures are handled correctly, verses five and six. Prediction, control, and judgment, especially with regards to the king or a despot ruler, or like restraining the wind, futility, frustrating, and failing, according to verses seven and eight. The preacher has experienced the truth about exercising authority over others and witnessed the possible harm done to the subordinate, verse nine. In other words, stay present and be careful. Chapter eight, verses 10 through 14, iniquity, iniquity between righteous and evildoers leads to futility. The wicked and religious are soon forgotten, verse 10. If a person fears God, it'll be well for them, even though a sinner escapes repercussions, verses 11 and 12. But the evildoer will not lengthen their life, verse 13. Because the righteous suffer by the sinner's deeds and the wicked enjoy the righteous deeds, Job chapter 21, verse seven. Interpreting life is futile. Verse 14, the uncertainty and powerlessness in life causes misery. The idea depresses me that no amount of effort guarantees an intended result. I mean, no, no amount of effort guarantees a specific result. How depressing is that? Now, personally, I like asking why, and I like understanding people, events, and life around me. But according to the last paragraph of chapter eight, it is a waste. In chapter eight, verses 15 through 17, because of the imperfect world and the inequity of life, the pursuit of understanding and wisdom about life is a mystery and it cannot be done. People should find pleasure by enjoying the good things of God in their life, like eating, drinking, and making merry, verse 15. Because even though the preacher has examined and searched to know wisdom, verse 16, and witnessed God's work, the conclusion is that no discovery can be made, verse 17. That certainly reminds me of the letter of Romans in the New Testament. Romans chapter 11, verses 33 and 34. Um, in the futility, remember to live, enjoy God's blessings, and accept that some things are mysterious and beyond human understanding. Live, enjoy, and accept what comes. One video, one chapter. Well, in summary and conclusion, let me quote an authority. Hubert, page 197. I've quoted him in his book before. The eager beginning of the quest at Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse 13, and its unsatisfied conclusion at chapter eight, verse 17, form a bracket within the book that fences off and billboards its essential message. We are called to live as well as we can within the limits imposed on us by the fundamental differences between us and God. Live as well as we can. 
to seek to exceed those limits is both arrogant and dangerous. Quote. What is Ecclesiastes teaching for us so far? The first eight chapters. Live within the limits of being the created, the infinite. Uh, the created, the finite. And not the creator, the infinite. Live within limits can be a powerful principle in many American lives, including mine. This topic is incredibly important and, and we need time to think about the purpose of our individual lives. Why do I exist and how can I make the most of the time that God has given me. If you're interested in delving into Ecclesiastes um, deeper, then I wrote a book in 2018. It's 50 pages. It's $1.98 on Amazon. It's for a Kindle, an e-reader, and it's called Search for Significance, an Examination of Ecclesiastes. And I will put the link to this book on Amazon in the description below as an additional resource for you if you wish.